The Kinta Valley, a quiet spot among the Malaysian mountains, has the world's largest deposit of tin. Malaysia is a country in Southeast Asia. Many people who live in Malaysia have come from other Asian nations. Chendrong is a new village in the Kinta Valley. Chinese tin miners live here. It is growing rapidly. The population is expanding and new businesses are being introduced. Sixteen-year-old Afo lives in this house with his family. At night, when the house is quiet and his chores are over, he studies. One of the best students at his high school, Afo wants to be a doctor. A Chinese family is a close-knit unit which believes in hard work. They do not work just for the sake of working but to get money for things they need. Every family member works toward this goal. Both of Afo's parents are tin miners. His father, A Chao, travels eight miles from Chendrong to the Iron Ship, as the tin mining dredge is called. Bridge floats on a man-made lake. Achao works on the dredge. Malays and Indians, as well as other Chinese, work with him. The buckets go down almost 200 feet and into the valley floor. The sandy soil contains tin ore. is separated from the soil, and the soil is washed away. The Kinta Valley is being dredged for the third time. How much ore remains in the valley is not known. Some experts believe there will be tin here for decades. Apo's mother, Lu Fong, is also a miner. Like most working mothers, Lu Fong wishes she had more time to spend with her youngest son. But when she leaves for work, her son must stay at home. does a different kind of mining. It is called open face mining because the ore is close to the surface. 
Before mining a new location, the jungle is cleared. Working mothers do this. Lupong's stamina is tested daily by working in 100 degree heat and high humidity. Lupong works for a company which operates several open face mines. Each is mined hydraulically. Water is directed against tin bearing soil. Water and tin bearing gravel are pumped through pipes and sluices, then washed down a sloping wooden trough. The heavy tin ore settles on washboards. The water, sand and soil wash away. Chow is fortunate to have a second job. He has carefully saved enough money to buy seven acres of rubber land. He uses the income from the sale of rubber for his children's education. Free public education is offered in the Malay language, but Ah Chow sends his children to private schools for an English language education. In this household, 15-year-old Yuk Sin voluntarily accepts the job of running the house. She enjoys her chores, which include child care, washing, and marketing. In the afternoon, Afo returns from school. He feels a responsibility to succeed in his future career so that he can help his parents as well as the Malaysian people. his ambition of being a doctor. How does the way Afo and his family live compare with the way you and your family live?